Hi everyone. Can, can you hear me in the back, even if I move a little bit back? Yeah, because I used to do this before because... Yes, in the past. In the past I used to work for UTS. Who's from UTS? Oh, quite a few. Okay, all Android developers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Alright, cool. Alright, so in my previous life I worked for UTS as a lecturer and I was actually teaching Android. So, um, so those guys that were in my class and if the CEOs here not so happy, don't blame me, you know. So uh, anyway, I, I left UTS and uh, I, I decided to become a contract developer just to try something different. So what I did is I started on the left hand side with loyalty programs. So if you use Red Rooster or Porto or Mad Max and the apps are not working, uh, you can blame Lewis over there. So, uh, so I, I wrote them in the beginning and then uh, Lewis, he, he continued. And then I moved on to another project, Pocketbook. You guys have heard of Pocketbook? No. no? Award-winning fintech, you know, the best mobile app apparently. Anyway, I worked on that one, good fun. And now I'm working for the New South Wales service on the digital driving license. So uh, it's happening. So hopefully in a year's time, you won't need any more your driving license, but you do need a mobile phone. And if you're pulled over, you can uh, show your mobile phone. And if you're lucky, they let you go. So um, all, all interesting. But the funny thing is, is and that is actually related to my topic, as a contractor, you walk into companies and they have existing code. So you, you come in to, to fix their problems. So what do you see when you walk in? You see a lot of trouble, yeah? So if you're lucky, you see something like MVP. Do, do you guys know what it is, MVP? Yeah, minimal viable product, yeah? yeah. Uh, well, that, that's what you see, and if you're lucky, the app is built in MVP, if you're lucky, but quite often it isn't. But I had the opportunity, the last one, I was given the opportunity to, to rebuild the app using MVVM. So I've, I've done MVVM as well. So my question to you guys, who has done MVVM currently? Hands up. Oh, quite a few. Who is doing MVP? Yeah, yeah a little bit more. And who's doing something completely different? Oh dear, oh dear. Who is doing a lot of business logic in the fragments and activities? Oh mate, you really need to listen. All right, ah, all right, that, that is big trouble. So, all right, so then, then you, uh, anyway. So, always a big, an interesting um, discussion. So. MVP, model view presenter, and look at the color scheme if you can see it. Um, you've got three parts, the model, the view, and the presenter. And then you've got the MVVM, same thing. You've got your model, you've got your view model, and you've got your view. So roughly speaking, they're the same, roughly speaking, but they aren't. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit over these slides. Okay, if you have MVP, you guys should know this. You got a one-to-one -one relationship between your view and the presenter. Is that true? Yes. 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 Oh, no, always, it's always true. That's the way you should do it. And then, of course, your presenter can talk to your data model, the way, you know, how you want to do it. So your presenter is your middleman. Very simple. Okay. If you're familiar with MVP, you know that there is this, this very tight relationship between the two of them, you know? And one of the things is they need to have a reference to each other, yeah? Does that sound familiar? Yeah? All right. So, and how you do that? You define things in interfaces. The previous speaker was talking about that, you know, he was talking about the module and, and interfaces. That's part of the solid principles, by the way, is, uh, you know, you try to put as much as possible in interfaces to get to this high abstraction level. Alrighties, now MVVM, you've got the same color scheme. Oops, I think I went 
one too fast. Can I go up? Oh, still, still on MVP. Sorry. Um, so what you see, if you look at the code and you can't read it at the back, which is actually very good, but hopefully you can see the, the, the red boxes. This actually represents that tight coupling between the view and the view and the presenter. So as you can see, the view, well, let's start with the presenter. The presenter is supposed to have a reference to the view. And then in the view, you say, all right, you know, get a reference to the presenter in here. Yeah? So the whole bottom line is there's this very tight coupling between the view and the presenter. All right, let's have a look at MVVM. Same color scheme. You've got a view, you've got a view model, sort of the presenter and your data model. But look at this now. There is not a one-to-one -one relationship. You guys realize that? Who's done MVVM? Who's MVVM? Yeah. yeah. And what's good about it? Yeah, yeah. So what it actually means is, and I will talk about it in the next slide, is um, in this case, for example, the view informs the view model about certain actions. And the other way around, the view model exposes streams of data, which sounds very fussy, but it exposes data to the view and your data model is still the same as in MVP but and this is very important so look at the slide what it says so the view notifies the view model action simple the view has a reference to the view model and this is very important the view model has no reference to the view what it means is that the view model doesn't know who the view is. So it's like, like you and me. I'm the view model. You guys are the views. Yes, I do see you. And I can emit streams of data, information. Whether you absorb what I'm saying. <laughs> he answers it. Doesn't, I don't care. Well, I do care. But I mean, I can't justify I can't I can look at you and say do you understand what I said and you should give a confirmation you should not yeah but in general I can't so this is the beauty of the view and the view model is like me as the view model I can emit data you guys are the views you are listening you're subscribing to what I'm saying or you're not some people are switched off watching doing the mobile phone stuff, as I can see, they're switched off. That's fine. It doesn't affect me as a view model. Yeah? So very, very important difference. So, how, how do you do that? Okay, if you're up to date with the Google architectural components, you've got something called live data. Hands up, who has heard of live data? Who has not heard of live data? All right, time to, oh, Nick, oh, you're, you're in trouble, trouble, read, go, go online and uh, update yourself on, the, on live data, very powerful concept, I would absolutely recommend, you guys like it, those that know live data, you love it, would you ever go back, look at this, I didn't even pay them for this, so, how does it look like? My goodness. Okay, look at the code. Uh, okay, this is the view model. Yeah, I'm not sure you can see it, but maybe you can see this. So somewhere in this code, there is a feature called live data. It's right here at the top. You can't see it. But what it all says here is like I'm getting some data from my data model and I do some manipulations and I basically just spit it out, yeah? So what, what spitting it out in uh, live data terms is called post value, yeah? So you just announce it, 
and the beauty is the view so that's you guys you with some magic here you start listening to those uh, life changes to those data yeah so uh, I'm not going into the detail about the factories and all that sort of stuff but the bottom line is as a view you can subscribe to a view model you can observe the data and you know if something changes here you get automatically notified and you can do whatever you want to do with the data very powerful alrighty so what are the similarities between MVP and MVVM okay this is annoying I don't know my slides is one ahead of what I'm seeing on the screens so and that's why I'm getting confused okay what are the advantages of live data so this is copied from from the internet so I didn't make this up so if if, if, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you want to question this it's uh, where's Matthias uh, yeah if you want to ask nasty questions here yeah, go to the website you know so according to Google no memory leak so um, yeah because that that's a, a, a nasty thing with MVP who has written code where in your MVP presenter is my view still alive there we go can I have some hands yeah there you go yeah if your view is not alive and you start pushing data to that view you get horrible errors all gone all gone with this um, also so this also related when activities are stopped on pause you know live data will not transmit the data so they will live data that whole concept will will keep track of it another one another one is always up-to-date data very powerful so if you have an activity or a fragment that goes on resume and comes back uh, no sorry goes on pause comes back on resume it automatically gets data transmitted from the view model about changes very powerful to keep your uh, UI up to date anyway and the last one configuration changes if you rotate your screen you know the whole data stays still uh, alive the live data very powerful okay what are the similarities between MVP and MVVM of course both of them the view is light so those there at the back that are still putting a lot of business logic in your activities and fragments oh man don't do that don't do that so the view is light yeah it's only supposed to do visualization don't do any business logic anyone still doing database stuff SQL stuff in the views fragments yeah oh, no one dares putting up a hand now <laughs> fair enough okay unit testing always good and of course separation of layers that, that's what all these architectures are about okay what are the differences? I already talked about it. With MVP, you've got a tremendous amount of interfaces, yeah? For, for, for all your views, presenters, you've got your interfaces, all the actions you do, uh, you know, on the presenter and on the view, you have to specify that in an interface contract, you know? Can, can grow tremendously. So it's it, it, it just tedious okay the last one I, I talked about that is the presenter has to keep track whether that view to whom, whom he's talking whether it's still alive or not yeah so and of so if that if you compare that to MVVM as I said the view model exposes streams it's like me talking to you guys I'm exposing a stream you can subscribe to it or not I don't care the view model doesn't care so what that means there's a very loose coupling between the view and the view model it's very powerful so the M MVP doesn't have that um, no more interfaces thank God you know so you don't have to write all those uh, view and presenter interfaces it's all gone so that, that's pretty good and very important the live data concept that's used in MVVM solves this problem whether your view your fragment activity is still alive or not it's also very powerful all right it's getting to the end
Who's the winner? All right, I will ask you guys. Who thinks MVP is the winner? Hands up. <laughs> well, Nick, you haven't, you don't even know what live data is, so <laughs> you're excluded. <laughs> All right, but who thinks MVVM is the winner? Ah, who thinks something else is a winner? <laughs> what, what's this? Yeah. MVI. MVI, uh, another architectural concept. Ah, there's always a uh, difference. And I saw another hand there. What? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, there's always different, always different architectures. Um, so who's the winner? It, it's actually, it's not black and white. Okay, I would say from a technology point of view, if you have a greenfield situation, I would go MVVM. It's so much easier. It, 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 once you understand the concept, I would go for it. Um, problem is, and I'm now working on a project, they're still doing MVP. So you can walk in and say, oh, I, I want to do MVVM right now. The company says, well, sorry, no, we do MVP. So, so you always have this legacy issue. So it's, it's not, not straightforward to, to just walk in and say, well, you know, it's so much better. You have to switch because there's money involved. But what I would say, and this might be a bit controversial, if you look at what's going on in the iOS world and in the hybrid world, iOS is doing MVVM, yeah, if you guys are aware of that. For those that are familiar with Xamarin, yeah, the C Sharp, yeah, they are doing MVVM. So what you will see, and I had this discussion before, maybe over a, a couple of years, we as developers don't have a say anymore in what we want to use because you might have your project manager that has maybe a bit of knowledge about architectures might say, well, I want you to use MVVM because iOS uses it, Xamarin uses it. So, uh, you know, exchange swapping, you know, just of developers. You, you guys believe in this or not? No. no? Got that all, so yeah. All right, Kotlin, Kotlin. Why is Kotlin there? Kotlin, Co Kotlin, doesn't that look like Swift? Yeah. yeah. Ah, well, you know what? iOS developers love Kotlin. So, I mean, this is an Android group. You know, iOS, watch it. In a year's time, you get all iOS developers here. So you show me a little bit of Android and I will take over your job. What's my world? Word. Another one, Xamarin. Who loves Xamarin? <laughs> Guys, that's another potential big player. Yeah, you're laughing. Mate, yeah, you're, let's have this on record. It, you might be surprised. I'm working now for organizations where they have seri serious discussions. Government? Government, doesn't matter. <laughs> I can tell you, not, it's not just government. A lot of companies to say, well, why should we pay for an, an iOS developer and, and an Android developer if it can be replaced by one Xamarin developer? So there you go. So you watch it. So that's all MVVN, by the way. So you better start learning it. <laughs> all right, is that brings it to my end of my talk.